I have seen the face of Christ, not in the glorious mantle of kinghood, but in the rags of the panhandlers. I have heard the voice of Christ, not in the loud voice of the heavens, but in the painful and torn words of the homeless. I have seen the body of Christ, not in the dazzling and glittering lights of the temple, but in the fellowship of the marginalized gathering on the nameless streets. I have felt the touch of Christ, not in the rituals born of his name, but in the embrace of the unconditional love. Uh, good morning, my name's Rob, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. Yeah, Gorge Park, uh, 14 months ago, uh, was the place I went to, uh, uh, to attempt to take my own life. Uh, I sat on a bench uh, for about five hours that day with a knife on my wrist, wondering whether I, I should take my own life or not. And, uh, well, God intervened that day uh, as I cried out to him. And I, I put the knife away and walked back to my house. But still in despair, um, I sat on my front steps with my, uh, uh, my uh, face in my hands in, uh, in the total depression. And uh, then I walked in the house and sat down on, uh, on a chair that my grandmother left me after she passed away and I, you know, I, I shot out of that chair like it was on fire and uh, I landed on my feet and I walked over to uh, a bookcase that I had in the corner and I reached out and, and my hand la landed on a Bible. Uh, I didn't know this at the, at the time but uh, my, my niece who's a, who's a Christian in uh, Manitoba um, left that Bible on my, on my bookshelf three years before when she left for Manitoba. Uh, I didn't know it was there until that day uh, that, that uh, God uh, shot me off that chair. Uh, without God's intervention, um, I, mean, it, I might not be alive today to, to tell this story. Um, I was sitting in Pequeno Park, not too far from here, and on a, on a, on a day not unlike this and a crow landed uh, right beside me on the bench. And he was so close, I mean, I could have, I could have swatted it if I was that kind of person, but uh, uh, I didn't. And, uh, and the crow caught at me and, uh, and I, uh, I'm not sure whether I had anything that day or not, but uh, uh, that bird went away and, and, and came back with uh, five others. And uh, so now there's a uh, half a dozen birds there and they're, you know, they're closer than they usually get to people. So uh, I, I met a young girl that day uh, through the uh, Filipino uh, population of Glad Tidings Church. And uh, she said to me, um, can you teach me to do that? And, and I said, I'd love to teach you to do that, but uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to bring an adult. So uh, her, her care, caregiver that day was uh, standing not too far away and uh, uh, she introduced herself as Joyce and the little girl as Sarah. Um, so that became a, a new friendship for me um, and uh, it turned into uh, many, many, uh, many uh, Saturdays of uh, visiting with uh, Joyce and Sarah. Uh, Joyce is, uh, is uh, part of Glad Tidings Church and and she started talking to me that day, uh, or one of those days, uh, uh, about the Bible. Uh, and I do believe it was probably uh, me that started talking to her. Uh, I knew there was something in my life at that time that was, was, was not right. So uh, I, I went to Glad Tidings Church and, uh, well, I found a home there that I, I, I didn't know I had. I didn't know it was there. It's a home that a lot of people have found that uh, didn't realize was there. 
and I met uh, Pastor Ron uh, the day I walked into Glad Tidings Church and uh, he was good enough to uh, counsel me for uh, uh, a little while and uh, again the following week um, and he pointed me towards uh, Celebrate Recovery at that time it was Turning Point uh, soon to be Celebrate Recovery and, uh, and a fine gentleman uh, named Sean Chase uh, Sean Chase met me at the door with a, a great hug and, uh, and a welcome brother and, and it felt it made me feel good that day um, I soon became uh, well, I was actually going to Pastor Ron to, uh, to actually see if I could learn about the Bible and uh, I found myself in a 12-step program, which uh, I don't, uh, uh, well, I think it's great now that I actually did it. Uh, it was difficult for me at the time, being, uh, being a person that's walked away and stayed in the uh, shadows of everybody else since I was 11. Um, but it was a wonderful beginning to a wonderful part of my life. Uh, final journey in my life and that's uh, the journey with, uh, with Christ. This is Victoria, our city. Thousands of people walk down these streets every day while hundreds are walked by. Victoria has approximately five full-time homeless shelters and 11 emergency shelters, seven food banks for the over 20,000 individuals who use them. And most of these institutions are bursting at the seams. It can seem overwhelming to attempt to serve the need in our city. It can seem impossible. How do we know if anything is changing for the better? Does anyone ever manage to find freedom? Is there hope? My name is Cliff Power. Um, I grew up in the good old town of Langford, and I've basically been here all my life. Um, before I knew God, um, you know, growing up in my home life, um, you know, I want to respect my parents at the same time, sharing this story. So, um, you know, I, I kind of, growing up, I never really experienced love in a way that I really needed. And um, so it was a bit, you know, a bit of a battered lifestyle, one might say just really unsettled you know when I went to school I was kind of like a joking around type kid and um, detentions quite often and so you know I started to um, get the odd thought of suicide because I didn't have much self-esteem and uh, didn't really feel good about myself like through years of growing up I was always told you're no good you're an idiot and it was just continually like that right so you know I try to talk to people the you know the odd one and tell them, hey, I'm kind of struggling a bit, but I, for some reason I couldn't connect with the right people for help. And I was basically fear bound, right? So I was afraid to share a lot of stuff, right? So around, um, oh, probably maybe 17 years old, 18 years old in that realm, um, every area of my life was dried up. And uh, this guy, he, you know, unfortunately, <clears throat> this guy went and put acid in my drink. And that really messed my head up. And so, <clears throat> anyways, long story short, I ended up on the streets of Victoria. And then, man, you talk about hit a bottom. And then, um, I remember after a while when I got off the streets, I stayed at this hotel downtown. And I thought I was doing good, you know. And it was like I had to leave food on the floor for the cockroaches to leave me alone at night. But I still thought I was doing good, right? And, but as, as time went on, you know, I still wrestled with, you know, not having hope, you know, and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, after four treatment centers, you know, um, 
later, you know, I still couldn't get get straight. And my last tr treatment center was the Salvation Army, and that was a 28-day program. But that that was another turning point because when they brought out the Bibles and started talking about God, I literally stood up out of my chair and told them where to ram the Bible. And then, so I thought, that's it, I'm out of here. And as I left, this counselor, her name was Chris, she stopped me, took me in the room, and started talking with me in a very caring and loving way. And that was a turning point for me. And I stayed in the program and I actually finished it, which was my very first time ever, you know, really finishing one. And, um, but still, God got in a little bit deeper. But a few weeks went by, I'm driving down the road on a Sunday, coming from the lounge, drinking double scotches, and all of a sudden, it's like something grabbed my head, it felt like, and I turned and looked, and this church just went boom and stood out to me. I sat within, like the, when I walked in, there's this big circle of people, nice haircuts, well-groomed, really nice clothes, you know, and then me, you know. So I, I walk in, it was really weird because there was one chair in this big, huge circle. And so anyways, I sat in it and um, the pastor guy's talking. And I'm sitting there in this chair and my mind is going, oh, look at these people, man. Oh, you know, I'll never be like them, you know, and I don't really want to be either, you know. And then all of a sudden I just jumped up out of my seat and I said, look at you guys. Just look at you, man. I'm not like you and I never will be. I'm out of here. So I start walking out, and the pastor goes, Cliff, sit down, we want to pray for you at, at the end, you know? So totally against my character, I backed up and sat down and kept my mouth shut. As time went on, you know, a couple weeks later, I got on my knees in my bedroom, November 17th, 1987, and for some reason, this was my day, and I just said, God, if you're real, please, you got to help me. And it, that's all it took. And all of a sudden, I was hit with this love bomb. It was on me. It was in me. It was everywhere. And it was the first time I ever felt love at, in that magnitude. So when I, when I got back from Toronto, you know, I was connected with a couple um, in this prayer group. And um, yeah, so they took me in to live with them. And really, really got me uh, discipled well. And but that, you know, I needed that. And to this day, you know, any couple that takes in people that are struggling or they just got saved, it's a win-win situation. So now, um, I run an, uh, an outreach called Extreme Outreach Society and connected to that is Super Kids. Uh, I still help uh, to this day uh, drug addicts into treatment that want help while well, you can have any type of addiction. Um, but it's really awesome because I know that God is always there and that no matter what I fall into or stumble whatever it is you know um, I know he's there with open arms and I can go to him you know no matter no matter what it is My name's Karen Daly and I live in Victoria, Canada. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I had a drug and alcohol problem. I was an alcoholic for many years and became a drug addict at, um, in my late 30s. And I lived on the Vancouver East side. Um, I was hopelessly addicted. There was a night in Needle Park in Vancouver uh, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning and I'd been up for about three days um, using drugs and um, not sleeping night and day and there was a moment of clarity and there was no one else in the park and I was looking around and, and I started saying, um, asking the question, what am I doing here? What am I really doing here? And I heard a voice say to tell the story. From that moment on, I knew I wasn't alone. I knew who it was, it was Jesus. And I knew that no matter what was going on in my life, that uh, there was a reason and a purpose for it. And I, he was gonna get me out of this. 
um, that began a journey of trying to get clean and stay clean. Um, I took a few trips to Victoria and hooked into the church and, and met some people and, and I realized Jesus was the way and the truth and the life. Um, but I kept being drawn back to that old life in Vancouver. The drugs, it's a powerful, powerful addiction. Um, but there were some strong relationships. There were people that were genuine and I could see that their faith was real. And when they prayed, they believed that Jesus heard them and, and he answered their prayers. Meanwhile, there were people praying for me. My mother had come to the Lord in Victoria and she had asked the pastor of our church and various people in different churches to pray for me. And they were faithful in that and strange things started happening in my life. There was one, one situation where I wanted to go out and work at a, the Bible camp for the teens in the kitchen and I needed some ID. Um, of course, I didn't have any ID and I was so excited about going and serving God and serving His people that I had gone into the office this one day and I had to have a criminal record check done, and, um, but I had to have ID to do that. And I needed $35 and I didn't have it. And there was a woman that worked in that church office who, she took money out of her own purse and handed it to me to go and get that ID. And that did something to my heart. I could see that she was real and she was beside me and willing to help me on this journey. I'll never forget that, that kindness. And she became a very special friend in my life. I started meeting people that had prayed for me when they hadn't met me. They didn't know me. They were just believing in faith that this woman addict would, would come to the Lord. There was a time that I was out downtown Vancouver. I was using drugs for three nights and three days. Uh, it was an extreme time. I was using drugs very, very heavily, crack cocaine and heroin. and, and um, I got this sense, this strong, urgent sense to get on the ferry and go to Victoria. Go now, go now. Um, it was so strong, I, I had to listen. So I went and I grabbed my belongings and got down to the ferry and got on the ferry for Victoria. And through that trip, um, this just a strong sense of release and um, moving into a new life and I was crying out to God, I was crying the whole journey. I was worshiping, I was singing, I was crying. And it was like this unbelievable experience of, of knowing I was moving into a new life, that everything was gonna change. By the time I arrived in Victoria, I was clean and sober, I'd been set free, I was delivered from drugs and alcohol. So hallelujah! <laughs> and uh, that's the story.
to Victoria to reach out to those that they see. Um, they may look shabby on the outside, but they're just like us. And they're hurting and they're lonely and they're longing for a friend. And they need Jesus. They need people to talk to. Just have a cup of coffee. It, it's one person at a time. You don't have to go after the whole world. Jesus touched one person at a time. He went after the one. The one matters to him.